Colorado Rockies lure hunters from all across the country. And beyond just the abundant game, the sheer beauty of the landscape is enough to satisfy. Randy Newberg is in pursuit of mule deer along their winter migration corridor from the Maroon Bells Wilderness near Aspen to the White River National Forest. It'll be a tough hunt, battling snow, altitude, and hard hiking conditions. But it's that very struggle in hunting on your own that makes it that much more sweet in the end. This is the White River National Forest here. Everything that's this gridded stuff here, that's the winter range for mule deer. We know we're hunting migrating mule deer. We know we're hunting in the rut. I'm just kind of overlaying these maps to the Forest Service map. And my wiggle marks here are kind of a, an overlay of these winter range areas. Oh yeah, pop tarts. Pop tarts, gotta have pop tarts. Pop tarts, cinnamon, brown sugar, cinnamon, raspberry, s'mores for Vito. Man, Tony, this is not good. No, it's not. I'm a little fidgety about getting out of here. We are in Western Colorado for a fourth season mule deer hunt, which happens the middle of November. I'm lucky on this hunt, I have one of my best friends, Tony Melillo is with me. Tony and I were neighbors for 10 years. Tony doesn't have a tag, but he's along for just company and moral support. We have been here for two days scouting. Mm -hmm. It's turned into a mud disaster. Yeah. <laughs> no snow like every- well, We had that snow this morning when we were out. There. Right. No, it's mud. You know, the plan was the snow would push them down low. Yeah, no, there's not enough snow to do no. that. So we're, we're just gonna have to, in the morning when it's frozen, we're gonna have to get up high and spend the whole day up there oh, yeah. hunting and glass and hunting and glassing. Yep. We've seen deer though. Oh yeah, we've seen lots of deer, but they're down here on the private. Yeah. Which without access or writing a big check. I don't have any checks with me right <laughs> Just so you know. I have another friend who's been one of my longtime hunting friends, Vito Quatrero, who's with me, and Vito does have a tag. We have different hunting strategies. Vito's more of a walker, cover ground, cover ground, go, go, go kind of guy. I'm more of a sit in glass, sit in glass kind of guy. So I suspect that the, the way things have been laying out, he'll go one way, Tony and myself will probably go another way and just sit and do more glassing. Between the two of us, we're hoping that we can luck out, hard work, good planning, Combine those items and one of us might be able to, to find a buck that, that is what we're looking for. What'd you find, Vito? Uh, there's some amazing country up on top. We've really? got to find a way to get everybody up on top tomorrow. It is awesome. The sagebrush flats are up there. Uh, there's deer sign. Let's go up to the trailer and let's pull out the maps and plot a strategy. Okay, let's do it. That works. See you up the trailer. Okay. Well, Tony, opening day. See if we can get up this ridge. At least there's not been any hunting. They might still be out here in these openings, so see what we can find. Hopefully our scouting pays off. At least the snow isn't crunchy. No, this snow is actually pretty good. Yeah. So there's one. Straight down there. in the first day. I'm just walking right out here and seeing it. First day. Yeah. Three deer right in front of us. Maybe a good sign. Boy, one is just, that's a buck. Yeah, he's super heavy, but he's not very tall. He's not very wide. I mean, he knows we're here. He's got other thoughts on his mind. I think so. Man, this is a good spot to glass from. I can't believe how many deer were right in here. He's tempting fate, I'll tell you that. How far is that? 360 yards. First morning. That's kind of a... You know what? A tag that's taken four years to draw. 
Uh, I'm gonna hedge my bet here that's, and let him go. That's because you're more of a hunter than I am. <laughs> Boy, that buck is tempting. Yeah, well, he isn't gonna wait around for you too long. If he's here, let's see, it's a five day season. This is the first day. I'll promise you, if he's here the morning on the fourth day, yeah, I'll shoot him. What do they say? Don't pass on the first day that which you would shoot on the last? Yeah. <laughs> yep. We're gonna head that way, but before we go that way, let's go check behind us here. He grabbed that. Yeah, that was a big wide open area over there. Let's see what's over here. Do you want to spot him? I see another hunter up there. Oh, on that knob. Oh, man. Public land hunting, I guess. Well, hopefully he keeps going that way. Yeah, we'll just, we'll let this basin go then. Darn it. Let's maybe head back that way. Because there's, I mean, this is the first little knob we've came out on. There's, well, the truck's right there. <laughs> no, there's 10 more knobs just like this over this way. So. Let's go. There's so many deer in here. I love to watch the mule. I love to watch them the way they prance out on all fours. Whitetails don't do that. No. If you were with a guide right now, wouldn't you be doing like what somebody telling you to do? Script it out for you. Yeah. Going to places where yeah. they want you to go. And yeah. Which is why I do it on my own. I don't want someone holding my hand while I'm trying to hunt. Well, Tony, I think now that the sun's been up, it's getting midday here, mid-morning. We'll probably start heading back that way from where we came. Towards the truck? Yeah, and just let the deer rest, let them come out this evening and see if we can glass something up this evening and be right on that same knob. Because yeah. when the does come out, they'll bring the bucks with them, so. Obviously, foot is not the choice of travel, Tony. When we walked in this morning in the dark, yeah. there was not one track other than ours. No. Now there's, I don't know how many ATV tracks. I see at least three tires, different yeah. kind. Of different tread design, yeah. It's easier to walk on. <laughs> Well, Tony, what do you say we get a cup of coffee and a snack somewhere? There he is. Where's the, uh, where's the animal on your back? What's, no blood on your hand. You see much? Had an awesome day. It was a beautiful morning. I didn't see that many deer. I probably only saw a dozen. Yeah. I saw one. Four point, that's uh, inside the ears, 14, 16 incher. I saw a raghorn bull elk yeah. down in the hole over here. Cool. And a black bear. Cool. Yeah. So. Let's, uh, let's load this up and get out of here. Okay. thinking is you know there's this lower trail here Yep. we go up there if we want to we might split up one of us take the higher trail one of us take the lower trail and just because if we don't go in there and look at it we're not going to know what's in there we'll never know so. due to my advanced age i think you ought to take the upper trail <laughs> great idea <laughs> This is our afternoon hunt. Yep. Well, we know this can be checked off. Let's bust out of here because we got about an hour to get there. Yep. Before and it took dark. us an hour and 20 minutes to get in here, so. Well, hopefully it's downhill most of the way. It will be. Uh. 
I expected at least two days, whether morning hunts or afternoon hunts, to be complicated on account of private land. So we got one of those out of our way. I don't see on that map, I don't see any public or private land down there. I'm I don't confused. see where that, that fence makes any sense at no. all. No, and someone's posting it. I don't know if it's someone posting public land or what. Frustrating, I know that. <laughs> This is the second morning. The reason that we're gonna focus on this is we know there's public land a couple miles this way, a couple miles that way. There's a lot of deer in here. There was a buck up the road there, mm -hmm. to the yeah, left of the road. If you were that group of willows, the brush cuts these two closest meadows apart. They ducked right down in the brush down there. So we're we're at the mercy of the private land, public land issue. We're at the mercy of the weather. We're at the mercy of hundreds of elk hunters in the woods while we're here deer hunting. But we are having fun. That spot you just you just watched those seven oh, yeah. going behind. Yeah, them. Just at the tail of that, there's eight or nine over there. Yeah. <clears throat> and all does. I don't see any buck. Yeah, the back one. The Back on the buck. Is he? Yeah. No, he wasn't there before. Okay, he's sniffing. Yeah. Suppose that's a, there's another little buck in there. No need to run after any of those ones. Nope. Some pretty big deer jack track right here. Yeah, they've been in here. Oh my heavens. I think if they bedded right now, <clears throat> they bed on these north-facing ledges here. The shady sides? Yeah. Too warm for them to be out in the sun right now. Too warm for me. It's part of the American taxpayer's public estate, so what a great thing to have. Millions and mil hundreds of millions of acres of public land to hunt on. Smokes, there's a big buck right there. Tony, come here. Look through this spotting scope. That's about a half mile. I got, I got 10 minutes to get there. Can you give me hand signals to get there? This is straight ahead. This is below you. Left, right, or left, right. About 10 minutes of light. Right on the edge of those trees. Gotta get downwind. on the ridge 15 minutes before the end of shooting light run down here I this brush is so thick down here I told Tony to stay up on the ridge and give me arm signals of which way to go come around the corner he's standing there looking at me by the time I pull my, my binoculars up he sees me he looks at me I bring my binoculars down I get ready and boom boom boink boink Man, he is a nice buck. <sighs> Darn it. Here we are, the fourth morning. It's a Saturday, and this place is like a zoo. We pull up here, there's someone already parked here, down there where we've been hunting, which, hey, first come, first serve. Another truck comes by, keeps driving, takes and drives down an ATV trail, right down the middle of everything. Oh, man. 
so much for the plan. I told you we were just gonna glass all this stuff from up above, but with a hunter sitting right down there, two other guys having driven their vehicle right through the middle of this, I think our only hope is to just side hill this stuff and look down into these thick, brushy bottoms. Yeah. I don't know how else to do it. It's gonna be noisy and it's not gonna be that effective. It seems to me like Vito's right. We've been sitting up there for three days waiting for them to come to us and now we have to go to them. If we get out to this point and can glass back in, it's probably our best chance because we know there's a dozen does over there. All right. There's a deer right there. You got him. See that brush? You can see his head just sticking out of that brush there. shoulder yeah. where'd he go he just dropped down to the right there did he he just where'd jumped he just jumped down he wasn't moving fast but he dropped right down in that single sage right there the yeah. purple brush right down from that he he's couldn't down. have got far he's down then this is his spot oh man we had to crawl in here <laughs> we had to look for him that's the spot <laughs> I hope he didn't get off the cliff. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> uh, once I get down in here, Tony, yeah. I'm going to lose everything. So what I'm going to have to do, you're going to have to mark me to get over to that spot where the blood will be. Uh -huh. And then I'm going to have to go down and I'll yell for you. All right. Thanks, bud. Thanks for bringing me. Wow. Have a nice walk. Can't believe I even found an opening to shoot in here. What a mess. Well, my buck went down here. He's dead right down there. I can see him through the binoculars. I got to find a way to get down there with pack and frame, and knives, and get him back up here crazy here we are we're hunting up above the common colorado subdivision deal it's developed all the way up to the blm ground we we're hunting up on the bench up above here about another 800 feet in elevation ain't nothing easy here's with blood. you is it not so far there's not here's blood here's blood i can see where he went through here Holy moly. Tony, I think I see him down there. Is that him? Oh. Looks like he slid off the trail. He's all tangled up in there. He looks like a good one. What a horse. <laughs> Man. Oh. Look at that big thick skull on him. Whew. Boy, are we lucky he hung up here. He slid seven, eight yards off the trail there. And tangled up and everything. Wow, huh? <laughs> oh, Tony, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Look at this guy. Unfortunately for us, this guy uh, was a very tough buck and he ran probably 150 yards off that ledge and then slid down the hill. And you know, if I never see that hillside again, you're all right with that. With that big cliff, they'll call me lucky. It was a grunt getting him out of there, but we got it. And in light of all the obstacles we had to overcome, I'm, I am so pleased, so excited that this worked out. He put in the miles, he scouted the terrain, and he went after these bucks aggressively, tackling ridge after ridge up in that high country. It was that extra effort that led him to the ultimate success. A nice muley buck. 
a nice public land muley buck. Just heard from Vito. He just got his buck. We're gonna load up, we're gonna go give him a hand. He'll load his collapsible pack with meat, and then we'll load this one, we can get it in one load. Have you picked up Vito's pack? Yeah, it's only 40 pounds.